Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Today I'm going to go over this great puzzle called the Tower of Hanoi. We build this in my woodshop classes, and then we figure out the recursive algorithm in my math classes. So it's a great project to teach both math and woodworking skills. We usually make this on the CNC, and then I'll give you the super simple algorithm on how to move these discs all to a new peg following the two rules. Never a larger disc on top of a smaller one and only one disc at a time and then also explaining the minimum number of ways you could do that. Laminated overnight on a CNC cut jig. Okay, here's the Tower of Hanoi. This is a great math game, great woodshop project. I build this both in woodshop uh, and use it in my math classes. We do it as a CNC project. We cut out the discs out of half inch wood three-quarter inch um, scrap, three-quarter inch dowels. I got a whole stack of these. That's the only kind of expensive part to get for the wood shop. So this is it. You have three pegs. And you could have any number of discs you want on here. This one is six. It was invented in 1883 by Eduard Lucas. It's a kind of classic math puzzle and programming puzzle. There are only two rules to this game. Those two rules are one disc at a time. You can never move more than one disc. And you can't ever put a large piece on a small piece. So if you move one disc at a time, but then you can't put a large piece on top of a small piece. So those are the only two rules. And the goal of the game is to get every disc from one peg onto another peg. Okay, so this is kind of a classic math problem. It is also a classic um, programming problem to teach recursive algorithms. And the number of ways, the minimum number of ways you could do this here, if n is a number of disks, n is a number of disks that you have, then the number of ways you could do this is a recursive algorithm, 2 to the n minus 1. So if I have one disk, that kind of makes sense, right? If I have one disk, I could do it in 2 to the first, 2 minus one one way, and there it is. If I have two disks, two to the two, two squared is four, so if I have two disks, two to squared is four minus one, there's three ways to do it, or three moves. Here's one move, whoops, do that again. So here's one move, two moves, three moves. Okay, now if I have three disks, so now I have three disks, two to the third is eight, minus one, minimum number of moves I could do it in would be seven. So the way I do that is I go one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. So the minimum number of moves is 2 to the n minus 1. And uh, the only two rules are that there's no larger disk ever placed on a smaller disk and only move one disk at a time. Let me do this one more time with four disks, and then I'll show you my algorithm for how I do this. So with four disks, with four disks, I have 2, 4, 8, 16. 16 minus 1, I should be able to do it in 15 ways. So let's see if I could do it in 15 ways or less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, no, whoops, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. So um, that's how many different ways you could do it, 2 to the n minus 1. But let's take a look at this and see if you can figure out my algorithm. So with four disks is probably the best way to look at it. Um, so before we start, let me change colors here. I have a total of six disks, and I won't do all six disks yet. I'll just do the first four. So this is my algorithm. That's really pretty simple. You count the number of disks. If it's an even number, you go down two. If it's an odd number, 
you go down one. So before we start, let's do four discs. We should do it in 15 possible ways. So let's see here. We have even number of discs. So I go down one, two, that's one move. Odd number of discs, I go down one. Odd number of discs, I go back one. This is an even number of discs, so I go down one, two. Uh, even number of discs, I have to go down two, so that means one around the corner to two. Odd number of discs, one. Even number of discs, two. Odd number of discs, one. Odd number of discs, one. Even, one, two. Odd, one. Odd, one. Even right here, I even number of discs, one, two. Odd number of discs, one. Odd number of discs, one. So I think that was 15 moves. So that's 15 moves, the minimum number of moves you could do. I could add one more disc on there. So now I have five discs, two to the fifth, right? So I have five discs. So with five discs here, I have two to the fifth, 32 minus one. I should be able to do it in 31 ways. So let's see if I could do this in 31 ways. So I'll keep track of the moves, and you keep track of when you're watching me. If there's an odd number of discs, I go down one. If it's an even number of discs, I go down two. So right, so starting here with five, I go down one. Even number of discs, I go down two. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Odd, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, odd, 25, even, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So again, the goal is to move all those discs from one peg to the next. The two rules are is never put a larger one on top of a smaller one, so you can't do that, and only one disc at a time. And the number of ways you could do it is 2 to the n minus 1, so I have 5 discs. I could do it. The minimum number of time would be 31. Then you could go to 6 discs or 7 discs or 8 discs. Uh, it's a great woodworking project. It's a fun puzzle to have out. I usually just use scraps in the wood shop, and then we also do it in math, and we figure out um, the algorithm. So it's a really fun wood shop pro program um, and also a really fun math puzzle. All right, well, this is Jonathan at Colfax Math, uh, Applications of Math, All Things Math. I teach both high school math and wood shop. Really appreciate you watching this video. I'd love to hear what you have to say below. Um, so please comment. If you liked it, hit like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.